during a remote learning, Toby's teacher is still getting them to memorize and do recitation, and Toby has absolutely loved memorizing the Jabberwocky by Lewis Carroll. Good morning, class one. Today is Monday, April 20th, and we're going to have a recitation lesson today. You know we've been doing Jabberwocky by Lewis Carroll. We have memorized four stanzas already. We're going to be doing stanza five, which also has four lines. We will talk, we will memorize the words, then we'll talk about the lines and what some of the nonsense words could mean, and then we will learn the motions. Okay, let's get started. Jabberwocky by Lewis Carroll. Twas brillig and the slide. Toes did gyring gimble in the wave. All mimsy were the boracos, and the low rats outrave. Beware the jabberwock, my son, the jaws that bite, the claws that catch. Beware the jub jub bird, and shun the frumious bandersnatch. He took his vorpal sword, oops, he took his vorpal sword in hand. Long time the mansome foe he saw. So rested he by the tum tum tree, and stood a while in thought. And as in offish thought he stood, the Jabberwock, with eyes aflame, came whiffily through the tall gee wood, and burbled as it came. One, two, one, two, and through. And through the vorpal blade went snicker-snack. He left it dead, and with its head he went galumping back. Um, for instance, in our virtual middle school den, they post cartoons for us to make captions for, and they even take the time to ship the prizes to our doorstep. Also, I love how the teachers participate in the activities they put up for us. It makes it so much better and so much more fun. Sino is a wonderful teacher. I really love science when she has this skeleton named Harvey and she takes him apart. She takes um, his heart to show us how it looks like and his brain, to sh um, she splits in half to show us the insides of the brain and his lungs. Let me bring over Harvey. Okay, you've seen Harvey. Here's our, our guy Harvey again. Now, in the diagram, they said that they opened the lungs up so that you could see what was going on. And so that's why your diagram in the book looked more, oops, sorry, I'm trying to get the wrong way, more like this than like this, okay? This is more accurate, although now that I've moved him apart, I've twisted Harvey. Okay, so I'm going to take out the heart from our system here, okay? And when I get on the heart, you can see the, the windpipe, the trachea here that comes down. And so the air is coming down and it's going into both of the lungs and I can remove them as well. And you can see they're, they're, oops. Oh no, Harvey lost all of his guts. Okay, the lungs are fairly large, right? You said that the heart was about the size of a fist, okay? Like your, your fist size. But you can see comparatively, and I'm gonna take all of them apart. Comparatively, the lungs to the heart, you can see that the size difference here in what we've got. And so here are our lungs. It's really different because usually when we're in school, we meet every Wednesday and we have house period where we're all together doing competitions like that. But it's kind of given us an opportunity to do some things that we wouldn't have had the chance to do. So the first uh, week of remote learning, we did a poetry competition. So students on their own would write a poetry, poetry about uh, sp uh, spring was the topic. So they could write any kind of poet about spring and I think people really enjoyed that because it gave you freedom to kind of do things on your own time and write whatever poem you wanted to. And um, so it was different. That's not something we would have necessarily been able to do um, in school because we have a 45 minute period there. It's kind of difficult to just have everyone write a poem, but kind of giving people the chance to do that at home was unique to remote learning. And uh, this past week, we actually did a trick shot competition which was a lot of fun. Another thing we wouldn't have been able to do uh, if we were in school kind of gave us this unique opportunity. So people would go back in their backyards or in their house and film whatever kind of trick shot they wanted to. And we got some really interesting and unique ones, like a one student that threw toast into the toaster from across the kitchen. Oh, 
During this virtual schooling, the TWS teachers have been phenomenal. They've been supportive, they've been inventive, they've been hardworking. I get to hear from upstairs the sound of laughter during Latin class. I get to hear songs being sung and recorded for choir. Outside, there's sketching happening for their science nature journals. There's sprints being run for track. Um, for the house competitions, my daughter's been taking photos and writing stories. The activities have been active, they've been creative. At times they've been student-led, there's been prayer meetings on Friday afternoons, there's been escape rooms that the kids have worked together to solve. All in all, it's just been quintessential Wilberforce despite being remote and it's been a blessing. I decided to create a piece of art depicting the virtuous woman as described in Proverbs chapter 31. I used artistic imagery to portray her qualities of strength, dignity, generosity, and faithfulness. One thing I really enjoy about remote learning is Dr. Willett's at-home physics experiments. class, I love that Dr. Steen incorporates outside resources such as articles, videos, and interactive programs rather than just using the textbooks to learn. And there's one really interesting uh, group of muscles that I want to talk about tomorrow when we do our live um, our live class, um, this is when I want to um, I want us to compare. So your tongue is a whole group of muscles, and that's what allows your um, tongue to change its shape in so many ways. You can make it longer, shorter. You can curl it. You can make it flat, and it helps you with talking, with eating, with swallowing. Um, so the thing I want you to show me tomorrow is, can you roll your tongue? So it, that's a um, it's controlled by um, your genes. Some people can automatically, and some can't. So this is what I mean by, can you roll your tongue? Can you go like this? See, I made my tongue into a little loop. Some people can. Captain Science, can you roll your tongue? <laughs> All right, do you see Captain Science tongue rolls? Okay, what about you? Um, well, let's get Annika. All right, Annika can roll her tongue. All right, what about you? Um, this is, this is, <laughs> okay, so, so Mr. Steen, Mr. Dr. Steen cannot, you can see he's trying really hard, but he can't roll his tongue. Um, so we'll compare tomorrow who can and who can't. Hello, explorers, it's Mrs. Hart, and I'm going to start off our learning something new um, lessons every week. So if you can tell, I'm wearing a helmet and I'm also wearing knee pads so that Ms. Hart doesn't injure herself. I also have the assistance of my husband, Jim. Hello, explorers. How are you? So that he can help guide my bike. Ms. Hart is learning how to ride a bike for the first, like this is the fifth. Explorers, I'm gonna teach you how to make a healthy snack. First, you you get some bread and, and get some bananas and, and then get some spice and cinnamon and then, and then get some peanut butter and then get some more on the top of that and then sprinkle them on your plate. 